Hey, welcome everybody out. Our wellness topic tonight is the law of authenticity. So Jay's going to introduce the topic and we're going to do some energy balancing as well. It's yes. going to be great. Yes. And we picked a victim. Just kidding. <laughs> All righty. So let's talk about the law of authenticity. Uh, each year I learn more and more about this law and I just want to share it with everybody. So you can keep working on this. Okay, so basically, it's knowing your true identity and honoring yourself. And all good things that to happen in your world when you are true to yourself. Okay, it's amazing that, <laughs> you know, as soon as you love and accept yourself, um, you know who you are, life gets better for some reason. So, uh, knowing yourself means you live and move forward courageously despite distractions. So distractions can mean trials and things that happen out in our lives, okay? Things that we think, oh, that's inconvenient. How dare you? <laughs> but it happens. Uh, but you can still move forward. Um, you know that you are a child of God and know the great potential you hold inside. That's, that's the law of authenticity, just knowing who you are <clears throat> and then that power that you have inside. Okay, um, it means uh, you live life with passion, power, and purpose. Okay, the, the alliteration it wasn't intended, but it just came out that way. Um, and this allows you to have your own successes. Okay, part of being yourself is not allowing others to influence you if you don't feel that it's right. So you're not um, going to conform if it's not right. Okay. And the law of authenticity means, um, you know, it helps you be happy and, uh, and to, with yourself, uh, love and accept yourself fully. And generally, others come to love and accept you too for who you are. So it's funny because you no longer care about um, pleasing other people because, uh, you know, you've accepted yourself. And so suddenly people start loving it and accepting you too. So that's all we're going to talk about today. It's a good topic, isn't it? Okay. Very good. Any questions or comments so far? When I need it? this. You need this. <laughs> yeah, we need this. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. Clear away. Clear away. Clear away. That's right. So how do you live with authenticity? So the first thing is to know that you are a child of God. So you can pray, so you can pray and um, connect to him always. Um, so, you know, it's just sort of, sort of like a computer being plugged into the power source. You have power. You never feel drained. That's the idea. The second thing is that you know that you have this power inside of you and that you have actually a noble purpose. Okay, there's something that you have to do in this life and you need to find it and do it. Okay? So if we can be humble and follow that inspiration, you'll be able to fulfill your life's purpose. And when that happens, you are living with authenticity. Okay, and the third thing is um, know that lasting happiness and peace comes from, um, from come only from being authentic. So sometimes a little bit of happiness and, and a joy that you get here and there, it can be um, temporary uh, and, uh, you know, it's a distraction sometimes, okay? But the true happiness actually comes from when you are authentic to yourself, okay? And the fourth thing we want to uh, help you understand is that, you know, to be authentic, it takes a little bit of time to develop because uh, we've got things in our lives that we've um, let uh, get in our way and influence us and slowly you're peeling layers off and then you're revealing your true self. I met a friend um, again in Ohio recently and when I met her about six years ago, um, she was very different. She was, she was a lot heavier. Um, I think she lost over 100 pounds. Uh, she was very sick and um, just wasn't all there, okay? And when I talked to her, she said, Jay, the person you met was a shadow. I am me now, 
And I thought that's awesome. That's a beautiful way of saying that, uh, that she's authentic now. She's herself. Um, and you can see the confidence, the light in her eyes. Her skin is healthier. She's, you know, a lot skinnier. It's like the body saying, I've shed all of this stuff that is not me. Okay, so that's beautiful. And that's our natural self. Our natural self is healthy and happy um, and it's in there somewhere. So I'm giving you an example here of Mother Teresa. We, you know, most people respect and love her. Okay, Mother Teresa didn't wake up one day and say, hey, I'm going to save the world. I'm going to be Mother Teresa. <laughs> it's not like that. She, um, she became authentic and she lived her life um, so that uh, she's following her heart. Okay, so that's what I'm encouraging everyone to do. Um, this quote here. Uh, that she said, it says, God doesn't call you to be successful. He calls you to be faithful. Okay, so that's really powerful for me because sometimes our definition of success is, somebody else, is different to somebody else's. And sometimes we, we live our life, you know, just relying on the approval of the world or allowing ourselves to be defined by people. And, you know, never really knowing who you really are and living your, the life um, that you want to live, that you've chosen, okay? And so I love, she's a great example, okay? So she knows who she is and she does things her way and she focuses on her passion, okay? So that's important. She doesn't need to compare or be influenced by what other people think, right? Um, the definition of success is different from person to person um, and she doesn't allow herself to be distracted uh, by trying to impress people or please people. How often do we try to impress and please people, right? All we need to do is focus on being faithful, okay? Am I being faithful? And that's all that matters. Um, so that is very liberating, isn't it? Because you're not thinking of all the tons of people all around you that you need to please and um, look good and uh, try to explain yourself um, to okay the other thing too that's very important is she knows that God qualifies her to do her work she doesn't have to have a license from somebody to say hey now you can be a good servant of God now you can be spiritual mm -mm. you don't need to have that qualification from anybody um, but from God Okay, so if God tells you to do something, you do it and you own it, um, that's, that's great. That's enough. Um, so I, I feel the same way. As soon as I learned um, that it's just between me and God, I went ahead and did what I felt like I needed to do. And it didn't make sense at first because I'm thinking, well, are these little these itty bitty bottles of oils, you know, what does that mean? And how can I do a, make a business out of this? Or how can I make a life um, style and whatever it is from this? But I just did what I had to do and I felt like I, um, you know, it just was guided. I felt like I was guided. I just did what I did. Um, and then it led us to where we are today, where both of us can um, start, you know, quit our jobs and to have a, um, our own business and to serve the way we want to serve and have the time to serve the way we want to serve. Um, so we, we just need to focus on what God wants us to do and not be distracted you know, by trying to impress other people or please other people. Okay, so anyone want to make a comment or ask a question so far? That'd be good. So Mother Teresa is awesome. And that quote is really cool, isn't it? God doesn't call you to be successful. He calls you to be faithful. So just do that. All right, so I talk about this a lot, but I, I feel like I can repeat myself a few more times because it's an important uh, um, topic. Uh, so horizontal truth versus vertical truth. Okay, being connected to God, you have a very special power um, and it, it's knowledge, light, intelligence. Um, so we have many, many books and scholars that we can learn from all over the world. Um, and we learn that um, knowledge and we call that horizontal truth. So that means from our brothers and sisters, other members of um, our human family, okay? Uh, so that's horizontal truth. So in the scriptures, in Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 7, it talks about 
us ever learning and never coming and never arriving at the truth. So that means, you know, you can learn and learn and learn a whole great bunch of things, but sometimes you may have a lot of knowledge, but no, it may not mean that you you have wisdom. Okay. Um, so that's, that's horizontal truth. It's very important to read and learn from others. Um, but the other thing that we really have to balance is vertical truth, which is um, seeking heavenly's power and direction and wisdom. So this is a statue of Joan of Arc. Um, and, you know, it serves as a reminder that uh, somebody like Joan of Arc, a young lady, um, very simple peasant, uh, she lives with other simple, uneducated peasants, um, and she couldn't read. So obviously, she couldn't even use horizontal truth uh, to help her. Um, but she did what she needed to do, and you know, very inspired to liberate France. I mean, you know, it's amazing. <laughs> you will wake up one day and say, "Hey, you're going to save France." <laughs> um, but and she did what she did. She focused uh, on what she needed to do, and she had integrity. Okay, uh, so for me, uh, I just know that looking around, um, you know, people, you know, I, people come to me all the time and say, oh, I love to do doTERRA, but I have to study and I have to be a Reiki master. I have to do, da, 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 I have to do all of these things and I have to have an aromatherapy license and all sorts of things. I'm thinking, you know what, if you feel inspired to do this and you prayed about it and God says, go for it and do it, God qualified you. You're, you're qualified enough. You know enough right now. And God will add more to your knowledge bank and help you understand more if you need it as you need it. So don't make any of these excuses to not honor yourself. If you honor yourself, um, you, your um, authenticity will be stronger and stronger and stronger. And, um, you know, it's, it's very powerful when you uh, just honor that because you can be ever learning and never coming to the truth. Okay. So, um, so if you think about it, you know, when people erect statues for just outliers, <laughs> not the Peter potentials, you know, the people that have potentials, big deal. They haven't done anything about that potential. Okay. But people who follow their heart, do what they need to do. They're outliers because most people, you know, you will try to chop them down and say, don't do that. It's different. It's never been done before. Okay. And for you, if you feel like you need to do something and change things up, um, if it's, you know, if you're one of those people that say, hey, I'm a black sheep with a family, a lot of my friends say that. Uh, it's because you have something, you have this internal compass inside that you really have to honor. And if you don't honor it, you just feel unhappy, okay? So this is important to have this vertical truth. Uh, for me, uh, I, it's, you know, I don't know a lot of stuff, but I don't need to. I don't need to I share what I do know and I just do what I feel inspired to do. And that's all that's required of me. <clears throat> okay. All right. So we'll pause here for a moment. Any questions or comments? I just like to say that um, that is a goal of mine. <laughs> Authenticity. Yes. Cause um, there have been times I felt like in situations that, I just agreed with the crowd for the crowd's sake, or you agreeing with people for peace sake, or, and then you kind of feel bad, like, or, you know, you're part of something you really don't want to be a part of, you know, and I think it's, we go through that as children, and we go through that as adults, and we learn to cope you know, by agreeing with things that sometimes we just shouldn't agree with or what we really feel inside, we feel like we can't let it out because this one will be offended or that one will be offended. And not to say that we should just, you know, spurt out or, or just speak what we think all the time, but, you know, just to get to that place where you, you arrive vertically, you know, let God, you know, reveal to us who we truly are and become that and strive to be that better person and be authentic, be yourself. If you don't agree with it, you don't agree with it. If you love doing it, you do it. 
you know, love doing, do what you love doing and not what everybody else is, the world is telling you who to be or whatever you are, you know? So I, I don't know if any of you feel that way, but I'm sure some of you probably have, but I, I really like this because this touches things that I deal with, you know, in my life and um, learning to deal with it. <laughs> Awesome. Change, part of the change, growing up, yeah. maturing, evolving, you know. Mm -hmm. um, somebody, I'm trying to think of a statement. Uh, it was something that I saw. It, it'll probably come back to me. It was like there, and then it flowed off somewhere. It was about, I don't say I've changed. I. It wasn't, the word wasn't evolved. It was something, it was something they said, but basically, I guess the saying meant like, I didn't, ch I, I didn't change, I just outgrew this situation, I, I, I'm paraphrasing, when it comes back to me, I'll tell you, because I'm messing it up right now, but I really like that, the person was saying that, you know, don't say I, I've changed, or I'm acting funny, I, I just said I outgrown, or I just like evolved, and I'm not there anymore. I'm not on this level anymore. I'm going, you know, expanding. Yeah. But anyway. Because <laughs> we're always progressing, right? Yes. <laughs> and we will help each other. Yeah, sometimes people want you to, you know, stay where they are and they're not doing whatever. So. Yeah. Finish. Yeah. So, yeah, I appreciate this. I, I, I'm just. Hi. All ears. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so we have some essential oils to help you. Um, so we have, you know, the oils, I can tell you now that all of the doTERRA oils are positive energy and all of them in one way or another help you find your authenticity. So everybody will be different and they'll come to that place um, in a different way. Um, but, uh, you know, here's just some oils to just to help you. So you find that power and that passion and that purpose. And once you do, you're yourself. You, you, know, you don't have to be worried about pleasing other people, worrying about hurting other people um, or offending them. Sometimes you can just be yourself and very gentle and not be imposing and just say, mm, I don't know, I don't agree with that. But, you know, not be rude about it. And um, people will be, just be okay with it. They'll have to be. Okay, uh, so there's a balance. Can I, Pardon? Can I comment? Um, yeah. I just want to say that I think the main reason why we aren't authentic sometimes is because of fear, some kind of fear, possibly because of a fear of rejection or a fear that someone's going to look at you in a way that you don't want them to look at you. So I think a lot of the reason is reflecting back on you is a lot of the fears of your own fears, mm -hmm. not so much about worrying about them or other people. That's right. You, you create it actually, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Jamie. That's good. Okay. So Jasmine, Jasmine oil, it might surprise some of you, but um, this is the oils that I muscle tested for this class this morning. Uh, so Jasmine is for pure intention. So having that intention of just being true to yourself. So Jasmine oil will help with that. If you have Jasmine, coriander, uh, help you be, have inner guidance. Uh, juniper berry will allow you to dream. Uh, met a lady uh, recently and uh, I was telling her what and she's like, you know, just to be happy, but she hasn't really delved into it and really opened up that um, idea of dreaming and allowing herself to want, you know, want specific things and happiness. And I said, define your perfect day, define your ideal week. She didn't know, she didn't know, but if you don't define it, then you don't know, you know, what you're creating. <laughs> So juniper berry helps you create. You need to be creative in your mind. So start writing things that you think you might like. If you want to start work at 10 a.m. every morning, then do. Okay. Um, you know, I, I try not to have any appointments before 10, you know, because I want that morning time to be my time. Um, so, you know, you have to kind of think 
what do I want? Uh, and some of us don't know what we want, so we can just play with it until we think, no, no, I got it. I got this. Is this is exactly? I've made a decision now. This is what I want. Okay. Lavender is another oil because it helps you be expressive. Um, helps you express what you want and who you are. Um, for me, it was the hardest um, thing for um, me to like is lavender because I was a yes, yes person and try to please everyone. And I didn't know who I really was. Um, so slowly, you know, you can uh, tick the box and cross the boxes and say, no, no, not this, yes, this. Um, <laughs> lime helps you feel engaged, um, have more zest and passion for what you do and who you are. Um, and you know, whatever that, that is that you do, do that and enjoy that about yourself. Um, and of course, bergamot, bergamot is the oil of confidence. So some of these oils is just suggestions, but you can start here and, um, start to develop that, uh, authentic self. All right. Anyone want to add to this or comment on this? On the, what you were saying right before this, um, with horizontal truth and vertical truth and being yourself, like tying it all together. Um, I think that one thing is I felt like you, when I saw this, I was like, this is what it connects to me. That's who I am. This is what I love. I love helping people and I understand the body. And I always felt like, um, when I was young, I cared for my aunt and it was, you know, IVs and stuff at a young age. And then later I cared for different people and it was something that came naturally. And um, at a time of being in the hospital um, where my spouse was in a coma, there were things that, yes, I had studied medicine, but I didn't know these things. I didn't study brains. I didn't study. And I was just praying and looking at the like looking at him and just kind of reading his body by he was in a coma he couldn't talk but like just reading the things and going well that doesn't make sense it looks like this and praying about it and I and a lot of times I was shocked and my mom would say you know how did you know that and I was like I didn't I don't know God just told me what it was you know Heavenly Father told me and you know I, I needed it then so it happened then but since I found doTERRA and I want to help other people you know, I'd be like, oh, I want to learn as much as Jade, and I'm going to study, and I'm, you know, and I do, when we have these classes, I write it down, and I study, but I think what matters is all the things that I've heard in different classes, when I needed it, and I met with somebody, and they asked me, and I just, you know, I go knowing that person's about to ask me a question, and I pray and say, just let me be open to hear everything that I need to say for this person. Like, I'm just serving that person, so let me hear everything and let me recall anything that I've ever heard. And you'd be amazed, but that um, vertical inspiration, that vertical knowledge comes back. And sometimes you're like, I don't even know where that came from. I guess I heard that from Jade or someone. But, you know, it's it's because we're being connected and pure and honest to ourself and honest to our intent um, from Heavenly Father and for that person. And so I think... Sometimes it can just be divinely given and we don't have to know it. Um, and that's like just connecting to the whole entire, you know, them and you and Heavenly Father and being one and like a purpose for something. And so I think some people haven't experienced that yet, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen because all of us here, like we, we encourage each other and we're all saying that we want, this is what we want. And I think like peaches will relate because she's works in the nursing thing and and you're always taking care of others and that's what you love but she's going to be able to do it for others and the rest of them that aren't in nursing like my mom's not you know other Marissa, other people aren't you weren't but it doesn't matter because it's where your heart and your intent and your um being true to you and what you want to do with your life it'll come and you'll learn it and you'll be given that for the right time that you need it and you'll start retaining more and more i've seen how much after just teaching a class or two, I didn't need note cards. I, I retained it because I was trying to share it. So I think it's like hopeful because there's still more that I don't know, <laughs> but it lets me go. It's okay. I'm just serving right now and I'm going to get what I need. And if not, if there's something I can't remember, I just tell them like, you know, I, I can't remember right now, but I'm going to get back to you on that part. But this is what you need for now. 
and um, I'll get back to you on that. And and they're all just accepting and like, okay, yeah, you don't, they don't expect you to remember every detail, you know, but they are just happy with what you gave them and that your intent is focused on them and helping them. And they're just more than grateful. And so I can go back and email later. And I think, um, I, I think everybody will be excited when they experience that for themselves. But um, I loved, because I never heard of it as horizontal truth and vertical truth. And it just resonated with me that like, that's how I felt when I met G. That's what I want to do. And now I'm experiencing little pieces of it. Uh, so sorry about my dog, but I just wanted to share that. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you so much, Stacey. Yep, you, you've summarized it very well. Um, I love it. And, and a lot of the information that I have been given is just through because I asked, I asked questions and I feel like I don't know everything. If you want me to serve these people and I have this pure intention to serve, please tell me stuff. And a lot of things that come up, um, like, you know, the last class we talked about how, why people don't absorb nutrients. Um, that one, I, I haven't read it anywhere, um, but I feel very strongly about it. And when I help people with that and they've changed in that way, suddenly their body's absorbing nutrients again. I'm thinking, whoa, that wasn't from me. That was from heaven. So anyways, and I continue to um, record these uh, you know, gems that I receive. Okay, so if you break the law of authenticity, if we um, don't honor ourselves, you're going to feel unhappy and you will lack joy. You will feel rejected and you will feel hurt by people um, and you'll feel lost and you'll feel depressed and unmotivated um, and you, don't, you won't have this true abundance. Okay, even if people have money, they may not have friends and, and uh, good relationships um, and the time or whatever it is, or the feeling of being fulfilled. That's not true abundance. Okay, money is just one part of abundance. And of course, you get sick if you break the law of authenticity. Your body will make sure you know. And if you ignore it, then the next time round, it will be bigger and uglier and more severe. So you can really get it this time and so on and so on. It's just gonna get, get bigger and bigger and ugly and ugly until you realize that there's something that you have to change within yourself, okay? Um, and one way, one very big way that we um, break the law of authenticity is through blame, through uh, excuses and through omission. So if you have something you really need to do, okay, and you don't do it, that's omission. And that was me. Um, I felt very strongly that I needed to share and I started sharing without even thinking about it. And then I started to get very successful and it, it kind of freaked me out. And so I decided, no, no, no I'm going to stop. Oh, I'm not this you know, salesperson thing. Um, and then I stopped and I stopped for about a month and I felt so depressed and I felt so angry and upset and I don't know why. And then one day I was just on the treadmill and then you know, listening to all these nice, um, very spiritual, uplifting, um, motivating talks and things. And one lady said she felt like she sinned, a sin of omission when she felt inspired to do something and she didn't do it. And it was for me. That message went straight to my heart. I stopped that treadmill and knelt down and just prayed and then I bawled and bawled and I said that's it I'm going to honor myself and I'm going to be obedient burn my stupid pride on the altar get rid of it I need to do what I need to do and because of that every time I go out I think oh, just get rid of my pride I'm not going to worry about what people think of me I'll just deliver the message that I need to deliver and then just go home okay and that has really helped me be successful Okay, so the sin of omission um, or, you know, just admitting what you should be doing or making excuses. You know what you need to do, but here's all these excuses. I've got kids and i got this and i got this. And everybody that has given me excuses, I've had those excuses and I've turned those same excuses into um, reasons for success. You know, if you have kids, you really need to do this. So then now you have more time with your kids. If you have, you know, health problems, you really need to do this because you'll get better health. You know, if you've got no money, this is the best reason to do this. <laughs> okay, so all of the reasons that people have given me, I'm like, that's the reason to do it, not not to do it. Okay, I've got no time, well then you better do this so that you can have more time later on. You know, I get to be with this guy 24 seven. It is awesome, right? So 
you know, it's just amazing. Okay, just honor yourself and you'll find that happiness and peace and you won't be so sick. <laughs> okay, um, so blame and excuses and omission. Those are the ways that you break the, um, the law of authenticity. So in conclusion, okay, if you honor your authentic self, okay, the universe will be, your universe will be in harmony, okay, and you will have that peace and that power and that passion and the purpose um, for your life. And you'll be just so happy. Okay. So that's all I have to say about the law of authenticity. Um, anyone who want to um, add anything or say anything before we jump in and do some energy healing? Uh, just uh, can you just uh, further express because I'm trying to make sure I get the understanding of it says you do not act on impressions and inspirations. Yeah. I mean, what are you saying? We should be acting on it or don't jump. Oh, what you, do you should mean? be. This is how to break it. So if you're breaking the law of authenticity, that's you. You're not acting on impressions or inspirations. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we should be, you know, acting. Maybe on... I should make it clearer. Clearer. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Thank you for, for that feedback. Um, yes, if you feel like I've got to go down and talk to so and so, you just do, right? Okay. You know, so my girlfriend, she was, she had a, a cold and she was sniffly and she just sat there looking miserable. And I felt like, you know, I'll, I'll talk to her. I don't know if she's gonna enjoy oils or she's gonna reject me. Doesn't matter. And I talked mm -hmm. to her now. You know, six years later, she's, you know, recovered from cancer, recovered from all these things, and she's the one that said she used to be a shadow. And now she's not. <laughs> now she's herself. Um, wow. Lost so much weight and just amazing. So yeah. Anyways, that's uh, just following impressions. Alrighty. So we are just going to get a little note um, uh, up here, and then we can have it. Uh, you know, type up some of the the notes, and we're going to work on our friend Tom here. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, we can just, I'll just say a quick prayer um, and then we'll get started, okay? We ask God to help us. Um, Amen. Father in heaven, so grateful to be here and to help Tom. We ask you to help us and help all of our energy to help Tom and help him find his happiness and help him be authentic. Uh, we love you so much and ask you for blessings and assistance. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. All right, so... We did the first thing already on our list here. And the next thing here is just to dispel some evil spirits or entities because sometimes we just get interruptions. So, um, nope, none of that here. That's good. Okay, we're going to look at the heart and to see if we can open our hearts up so we can be authentic and love ourselves and um, be able to open our hearts to being loved by God. Okay, so any heart walls drawn for yes, no, any hidden heart walls, yes, no. Okay, so how about um, surrendering will strong for yes? Okay, so how many percentage? One, two, three, four, um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 60%. So with your heart, it's about 60% open um, to surrendering your will. So we're gonna write that down. So we're going to type it up here. Do you want to type it up? Or do you want me to? Sure. Okay. So, so sick heart. Um, hey, am I sharing this? Can they no, see yeah. it? Okay, let's share that. Okay. Uh, open. Heart, that's 60%. Okay. So with Tom, we just need to find out how we can open your heart even more. Okay. So we can go for oil, strong for yes. Yep. So let's look at our oil sheet here. Um, column A, column B, column C. Row one, row two. So the oil is this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Marjoram, marjoram is the oil for you. Okay, so that's in column um, C and row two. Marjoram, let's type it up. Can you type that up? I mean, I'm gonna grab it. Okay, 
Can you send me that graph after? Uh-huh. I don't have a new one. Oh, it's on my oh. website, Jane. What, what did you want? It was a chart. This one here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll put it in the um, group chat. Yep, so we'll give you a link to that, Marjoram. Okay, so Tom, Marjoram is the oil of connection. Do you have Marjoram there? Mm -hmm. Okay, can you smell it, please? Do we have it? Yeah, I'll go. Okay, so the oil of connection. So connection means your body parts are connected to each other and connected to God, connected to humans. Okay, so uh, let's see. We're looking at the negative emotions, roughly, yes. So, feeling that need for protection. That so feeling unsafe, and that's why we, we close ourselves off a little bit. Okay. Your stuff. Your stuff, father said, mother said, mother herself goes beyond mum. Yep. Mum's mum, mum's dad goes beyond him. Okay, so this is inherited. Inherited from mum's dad. Okay. So sometimes um, we feel unsafe and we don't trust the world. And it's not really, you know, from you. You've just learned it from mum, and then mum learned it from her dad. So it's just their way of thinking. We inherit, um, you know, skin color, hair color, and everything, but we also inherit thinking patterns. Mm. Can you see that about your mum? Distrust? I can see it with my mom, but um, with her biological dad, my biological grandfather, I've never, never met. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. And sometimes we just have a glimpse of who they might be. Yeah, okay. So have you started to smell that uh, marjoram oil yet? Yeah. How does it smell for you? Strong, not unpleasant, just strong. strong. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's see, can we clear this with you? Yes, no. Um, so Tom, what, um, cause, because we can't clear it, it's because something that about you, um, that you don't quite understand um, this particular emotion, okay? So you need to kind of um, dig into it a little bit and explore it. So what happens when you're with people um, and you have a hard time connecting to people because you fear that you'd be unsafe, right? What, what kind uh, of unsafe feelings do you have? Just with large groups of people, I, I don't know. I mean, it just naturally, I don't tend to be an outgoing type of person. I just stick to who I know and what I know. And it's always been like that. I mean, I've never really thought about it before. I just. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's possibly because you haven't thought about it before. Um, uh, that, that's probably why it's difficult to release. Um, but I would imagine um, being quiet all your life um, or just being reserved. Um, and, you know, because you, if you're in a crowd, for example, if you're with other people, we, we might be scared that they might judge us. Um, they might uh, misunderstand us. They might think poorly of us. Um, so some of those things are makes us feel unsafe, right? Um, they think that we're worthless, for example. So what are some of the things that you can remember maybe as a child? Uh, just kind of not being part of the central group, just kind of being out on the outskirts, just not really not contribute, just kind of afraid to put myself out there, I guess. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it feels like um, just being unsafe, being yourself. And what if they don't like you? You, um, you stay out, out of the group, not being accepted, 
right? Just feeling unsafe, just feeling like you may not be accepted, so you'd rather just sit here anyways. Yeah. Yep. All righty. So is that enough explanation? Strong for yes. Can we re release it now? Strong for yes. Okay, so take a deep breath in um, and just release that the need for protection. It's really everyone feels the same way. Everyone feels like, okay, if I make some stupid comment, everyone will laugh and then everyone will reject me too. So it's not just you, okay? Um, so that feels strong. So I'm going to put down here release. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So do we need marjoram for longer? Yes, we do. Uh, we need to rub it on. Yes. Rub it on your shoulders, your chest, your tummy. Okay, so marjoram is great for um, uh, digestion too. So we're going to write down one, two drops, two drops, once, twice, twice a day. Day, rub on your tummy. Okay, on the bottom of your feet, two strong for yes, nope, on your tummy only. Okay, and one, two, three days, weeks, for three weeks. Okay, so this is sort of like a shield for you, you know, that you're going to be safe so you can be in public. I have a girlfriend that um, she has very powerful phobias and she can't even be around crowds, let alone, you know, sit on the side and go, <laughs> you guys be there, I'll be here. Um, anyways, she started using marjoram and she went to a concert and she was texting me from the concert and she's like, I'm smelling marjoram. I think I smelled the whole bottle. <laughs> but she's around crowds and everything and she's okay. She's still okay. So that was kind of awesome to see that, you know, she's putting herself out there and, and trying to connect with other people and feeling okay and safe because she's actually rejected herself all these years. Um, and so she's a very aware of people rejecting her, that it's really her that it's rejecting herself okay all right so let's look at marjoram some more strong for yes we need to yes yep we do need to um and again um the other emotion that comes up is fear of rejection so that's that's one of the things that we're fearful of okay and like i said we reject ourselves first and um we we're hyper aware of other people rejecting us anything hint or remotely um, reminds us of that it, it will we will interpret that as a rejection okay so your stepfather said mother said mother herself goes be a mom yes no so this is inherited from your mom okay so I don't know about your mom but does she find um, do you find that she gets offended easily or hurt like, not hurt offended offended somewhat yeah i mean not not like she used to is is gotten like better she's gotten better okay that's good that's good let's ask can we clear this now strong for yes yep we can clear it now take a deep breath in and release okay and that feels strong okay so let's check the heart now um actually we have to do it in our affirmation uh, so the affirmation for you is I can form loving bonds with others. Okay. So sometimes you're, you're only sticking with people that you know because you know them and they're safe. But now you can open yourself up to making connections and friendship with other people because, you know, that we're all brothers and sisters. We're all the same. We've all got our own fears and things. Um, and once you find out that they're just like you, it's not as bad. Okay, so um, can you say, I can form loving bonds with others? I can form loving bonds with others. How does that feel? Good. A little frightening. <laughs> A little uncomfortable, right? Yeah. Yeah. So for three weeks and you rub that oil in your tummy, that's your association. You're going to be safe. You're going to be safe. Okay. 
and we will start to release fat, release poop and other things that, that we use as a protection of shield. Okay, a lot of times we gain weight because it's, it's, to, it's a cushion to protect us, because okay, it's a physical cushion to protect us from the world. Um, so this way things will release and uh, digest. Um, and so be, uh, be watchful because your body will have some changes, okay? All right, so say it one more time, see if it feels better. I can form loving bonds with others. Yeah, a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, still uncomfortable. Just give yourself about three weeks to just work on that and um, be comfortable with, okay, I'm gonna be okay with making friends because this is, in our business, it's a friend making business. So we'll have a very hard time if we can't make friends with people. Yeah. Um, for me, it's been so liberating because I look at people, I'm like, I want to be friends with her. And then I get so shy and then I judge myself and then I miss out on opportunities. Um, but nowadays I get to love people freely and I meet people and I feel like I know you. You know, I don't know why, but I feel like I know you and we're friends already. So it's, it's quite a big change. Okay, now let's go back to the heart and see how open that heart is. Is it above 60%? Yes, it is. Is it about, above 70%? Yep, 80. Nope, 71, 2, 3, 4, 5, 75%. And we'll write that down. Okay, okay. Okay, so. What else can we do? Do we look at um, emotions? Yes. Do we look at oils? Okay, we'll look at oils. Um, so we'll go back to that oil chart, column A, column B, row one, row two, um, and this one, this one, this one, this one, and lemon oil comes up for you. So it's column B, row two, lemon oil. Okay, so let's type that in. Lemon oil. Okay, so smell that lemon oil. Do you like lemon? Yeah, actually I do. It's a really nice oil. So lemon is the oil of focus. Let's write that down. Okay. So this is about mental fatigue. Do you experience this mental fatigue? Yes. <laughs> oh God, that's me, yes. <laughs> All right, so let's see, is it yours originally? Yes. Yeah, prior to conception, conception of birth, birth to 10. One, two, three, four, four. So this here is um, something at four years old. Um, I don't know what it is, but um, it's ever since then, whatever caused that mental fatigue, it's just keep on adding and adding and adding to it over the years. So do you have an idea? A couple things actually. Okay. You're, uh, welcome. You're welcome to share it if you feel comfortable. Uh, I was four when we moved stateside. Okay. So let me see. Is it strong for that? Strong for yes. Yep. It's that. You know, making a shift and uprooting you from where did you live before? St. Thomas. St. St. Thomas. St. Thomas, yeah. Where it was relaxing and everything was familiar. And now you're like, whoa, America. <laughs> you know, and a little bit too much overstimulated, right? Yeah. It, it yeah. Was a lot. Yeah. So that little kid, nobody says, hey, you're okay. <laughs> you're okay, let me help you adjust. Um, so that overstimulation is sort of like you're on um, you know, high alert all the time since then. And it just kept building and building and building on top of each other. Okay, so um, let's see, let's find some, um, let's see, one, two, three. Three drops of lemon oil. Drops lemon oil. Do we drink it? Yes, we do. Do we rub it on? Nope. 
Okay, smell it. Nope, just drink it. Okay, so drink once, twice a day. One, two, three, four days, weeks, weeks. For four weeks. Okay, so lemon oil breaks down old mucus. I mean, new mucus inside our body. It helps cleanse our gut too. And when the neurotransmitters in your tummy is cleared and clean, you'll make more connections in your brain. So when different things are happening, um, like if there's changes in your life right now, there's some changes, right? Um, you won't be overwhelmed and feel like, okay, my brain is just too much for me. Yeah, I feel tired already and stressed out and stretched. So this should help you with that. All right. So, okay, so it's about mental clarity. So let's put that down. Okay, I have mental clarity. Okay. How do you feel? I'm good. I'm all right for right now. Awesome. Feeling good. Yep. So let's see. Uh, let's go back to the heart. Is it more than 75%? Yes. More than 80%? Yes. 90, 81, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 85%. So we're clearing things out now. Do you like drinking lemon oil? Yeah, I have no problem with it. Okay. Actually. You like it? Yeah. That's good. All right, so 85%. Okay. So what else do we need to do? More oils from, yes, okay. So your body's asking for more oils. Now let's look at column A, column B, column C. Okay, and it's row one, row two, row three, and white fur. So the guys who, if you've never seen me muscle test, what I'm doing is just using my muscles um, to find the oil for um, Tom here. Okay, so white fur is the oil for you, Tom. Hey, do you have some aches and pains and sores anywhere? Because white fur is usually good for that. Generally speaking, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okie dokie. So white fur is about generational healing. This is what we all want. <laughs> oil of generational healing. And this is about being burdened by issues of others. Okay. For Tom, let's see, is it yours? Mother side, mother side, mother herself is being mom. Yes, no. So being um, burdened by issues of others is also um, a form of um, just conforming. So if other people are unhappy, you feel responsible for their help and you know their happiness. You want to help them. Uh, you want to please people. Okay, do you feel that way? Yes. Yep. Okay, so this is inherited from your mom, mom though. So she she was like that. Okay. Can we clear this now, Trump? Yes. No. Um. So where do you hurt the most? Shoulders, arms, legs? Uh, usually the back. The back. Mid. Say that again. Mid to lower back. Okay. Yep. So it's about money burden. Okay. Uh, so you can rub the white fur on your back once, twice a day. Uh, the other thing about this is that do you have white fur? Um, so when we're hurting, it tells us that we carry more than we ought to, that we need to ask God and angels to help us carry it. Because you, you know, in our minds, sometimes we forget that we don't need to carry it all on our own. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You think, oh, I have to find a solution. I have to fix this. And we forget, hey, well, you can ask for help from angels and God, right? So let's type in here, one, two days, weeks, months. Oh, so this is for two months. So do rub it on your back for twice a day for two months. Okay. 
twice a day, for two months. And um, so you can just say God and angels helps support my family um, financially. Okay. Um, and whenever you do that, it's sort of a mental association just to remind you to connect to God and ask for heaven's help to support because sometimes we feel like we're doing it all on our, on our own and, of course, it's too heavy for us to bear, okay? And of course, it is too heavy. But when we remember that there's help out there, your back will feel better. Okay. Yep. All right. Do you want to say anything? Um, just even right now, I'm feeling a little bit better than I was before. Mm -hmm. I have good faith that this will work out. It's just going to take some time, obviously. Yep, obviously two months, right? So be kind to yourself, you know, like what Jamie said earlier. Don't be like her kids, you know, giving it at one go and going, well, it doesn't work. <laughs> so be kind to yourself. Allow yourself to just change the way we think. Because all this time we've been thinking that I'm going to have to fix this. I have to find a new way. How do I help? Instead, hey, Father in heaven, angels, help, help, please. Help us figure this out together. Okay. All righty. So this is inherited from your mom. Let's release this. Take a deep breath in. And out. Okay. So what we're doing is just, um, you know, telling your subconscious to release it and asking God to, to help it. So what I do is I just find the imbalance and then um, I'm just the cleaning lady, so I don't do any of the healing or anything. You do it and God does it. Okay, it's not my power. Alrighty, so that's strong. I feel like it's strong. Yep, it's removed. Now let's go back to the open-hearted. So is it 100% natural? Yes, no. Is it 90%? Yes. Is it above 90%? Yes, no, it's 90%. So a little bit more that we need to dig into. Okay. <laughs> You're okay. We're all like that. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions um, or comments right now? No? Yes? Okay. Is it helping you guys too? I told, I just messaged them privately, but I told him that, um, like I used white fur for a good while for pretty much the same reasons, <laughs> and that um, you know I, you know what, what you feel like I have this to do, and what can I do about it? Because I'm just plugging along, but you just like trust in Heavenly Father, like you said, with that it's it's gonna He's gonna help you, and then it kind of just lifts. And so I just said like I understand how you feel, and it'll be I'll be interested to see um, in the two months how you like if you feel different and if you've changed but like I, I can't remember how long I had to do it for when Jade helped me but I did it another month because I wasn't as consistent but I was doing it because I was feeling better but I just felt like in the beginning I wasn't steady like doing it all the time so I did it one more but it truly um, lifted like <laughs> all the pressure and the burden and I was like oh thank goodness it's amazing to think that white fur is used to like lift a burden and connect you to like trust heavenly father and um i don't know i think that'll be an interesting journey but i understand like stuff comes from your mom or you know and then you're like but this is me it's my life you know but um so yeah i just shared that little thing of how yeah i understand that <laughs> awesome thank you stacy can i share real quick Jane? so i um i had some positive experiences with white fur back in i think it was january and I, I got to use those for several weeks as well to help me with some, some generational healing. And I found it was so interesting that once I was able to clear these you know, negative feelings I was getting, that I was actually better able to hear the spirit, feel the spirit and, and understand what it was that maybe my ancestors are needing from me today. And it, it renewed the sense of um, urgency in me to do family history and um, especially for not only my own family, but for Tom's. And then it's, it's kind of crazy. I, I was thinking about what everybody else was saying earlier, you know, Peaches and Stacy, that um, I, I feel like a totally different person. I've been doing a, a great deal of emotional and spiritual healing in the last six or seven months. And uh, it's, it's been almost miraculous for me. 
I don't, I look at pictures and I don't even know that girl anymore. I feel like I have gotten rid of so much negativity and just these, these waiting feelings that, that sit on your shoulders and they weigh on your spirit. And I feel like I'm turning into who I actually am and who I'm meant to be. And it's been so freeing and so beautiful I mean, to wake up in the morning and just be able to get up and know that I am a worthy daughter of my heavenly father and know that he loves me and that I can help other people has been just so amazing for me. And, uh, and that's all I'm going to say about that right now. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's awesome. That's so beautiful. Beautiful. So proud of you guys. I love you. So, Tom, there's another oil that came up to, uh, for you, but uh, I just wanted to reiterate that white fur is beautiful. And white fur, remember, guys, is about generational healing. So that means you are creating new pathways. You're not going to perpetuate the same things anymore. You're breaking chains and you're forging new chains, chains for your children and your grandchildren. And then you, and it says here, um, uh, you say to yourself, God and angels help support my family financially um, and other things so you can add to that. Um, and I am creating new pathways. So you just, as soon as we find out where it's from, your subconscious goes, oh yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll make conscious decision that we're going to do it differently now. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. all that's needed. Uh, okay. Uh, so the last oil for you here is sandalwood. Okay. And sandalwood is the oil of sacred devotion. Okay, so sacred devotion is about prayer and connection to divinity. Um, do you like that oil? Have a smell. Pretty good. Kind mm -hmm. of mellow. Kind of very mellow, you say? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, so this here will help you feel, clear out uh, emptiness. Um, because sometimes we don't feel like we're filled with the spirit of God, with love and with purpose and power. Okay. Do you feel that way sometimes just a little bit empty? A little bit. Yeah. Alrighty. So let's see your stuff, father side, mother side, mother herself goes beyond mom. Um, so this is inherited from mom as well. Okay. So can we clean this now, Trump? Yes, no. So is your mom a very spiritual person? In her way. In her way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alrighty. So can we clear this now, Trump? Yes, yep, we can clear this. Take a deep breath in and release. Okay. Okay, I feel stronger now. Okay, so that's removed. Um, and your affirmation is, I honor um, my higher consciousness. Or you can say, um, I am authentic. Okay. So, sandalwood, what do we do? Okay, rub it on, one, two, two drops, once, twice a day. That's spell drops. Drops twice a day. Uh, on the third eye right here, you just put a drop here and just lift it up so you can open your mind and um, your brain to uh, the downloads from heaven inspirations, spiritual download. Okay, twice a day, one, two, three days, weeks, months, for three months. Okay, so you can get ideas and inspirations. You're like, what, three months? <laughs> That's okay. Um, this is an important oil. And in fact, I use it nearly every day because I'm like, I need to know what to do today. Um, okay, for three months, that's good. And that's good. that's it. Okay, so now let's test your heart openness to receiving love. Um, is it 100 strong for yes? Yep, it's 100% now. We're good. Ah, <laughs> we made it to the end. Okay, so fantastic, Tom. How do you feel? 
Good. Feel good. Okay. <laughs> so we'll send that off to you. Um, but do you feel like it uh, touched some of the, the things that you feel like you need? Yes. Yeah, it definitely touched on some of the things that's probably been weighing down on me without it really me noticing. Yeah, you probably didn't even notice that. And this is the very first time we did energy healing for you, huh? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for being open-minded to this. That's great. Um, so, Marissa, you've got the notes and you've got the oils down there. We'll start using that. Alrighty, guys. So this call was about uh, being authentic, being the true you. And sometimes um, when we uh, are not open um, to receiving love for ourselves, we kind of hide our true self behind things. Okay. And um, this is one way we help each other uh, really find out who we really are. Okay. So we're going to end our call here. Anyone want to add anything? Um, questions, comments? Oh, good. All right. We'll just end our call here. Thank you for joining us, guys. Um, we look forward to talking to you next time.